Oh, hey kids, Grandpa here. So, uh, normally on YouTube we see a whole lot of unpacking videos. That seems to be a popular thing right now. Thought I'd try to do something a little different and do a packing video. And what I'm showing you here is uh, some of the gear I take with me when I go scuba diving. Now for this particular dive trip, I'm going to go traveling around the world. I'm about to do a circumnavigation and scuba dive all around the world. So I wanted to show you just some of the gear I take with me for a trip like that. First of all, as you can see, I'm kind of out of shape. Uh, obese is the right word. And I uh, want to let folks know, just because you are out, not in perfect shape does not mean you cannot scuba dive. Does it make it more difficult? Yes. Is it more risky? Yeah, maybe. If you have enough experience, you can make it work. Personally, I'm looking forward to a change in lifestyle where I can get out and go scuba diving around the world and help me get in better shape. Swimming is great exercise. So, uh, with that said, let me kind of go through some of my setup with you guys and show you what I'm going to pack into. First of all, let's start with what I'm packing into. I have a uh, lightweight mesh bag which is great for packing all my gear into. I can store it in this while it's wet. I also have a big rolling duffel multi-compartment which uh, has, room for my has room for everything uh, that I normally pack in here. My BCD, my gauges, my uh, scuba fins, uh, my hoods, masks, gloves, snorkels, masks, dive book, all of that fits in the rolling case. Um, I then have an extra box. This is a Pelican 1610 and I use this for, uh, for packing more gear. I like to carry with me a couple of these extra mesh bags for sorting stuff and carrying it uh, and transporting it. So that's what we pack into. We also pack into this large bag. Getting off subject a little bit, this is my free diving gear all inside this bag. It's a uh, SPET, SPE, I don't know what that is, OA. Spatua, Speta, whatever. Anyhow, I like this stuff. It's my free diving gear. And the difference is quite simple. Let me open this up so I can show you the difference between scuba and free diving gear. The first thing we're going to point out, or what was pointed out to me, and I don't necessarily agree with it, is the goggles are supposed to be different. The goggles for free diving are supposed to be low profile. In other words, they fit close to my face, so they have less air inside of them. Less air, less buoyancy. But the fact is, my regular scuba, gobble, scuba goggles actually are about the same design as this, so I'm not seeing much difference in that regard. The next thing that is noticeably different with free dive gear over scuba gear is the length of the fins. I'm getting a snorkel out here with it, but it's the length of the fins. This is my free dive fins. You can see how long they are. Compare that to a scuba diving fin. There's a big difference in the length of them. I'll get more thrust out of the free dive fins than I will out of the scuba diving fins. The free dive fins also wear my legs out faster if I'm trying to cover a lot of ground. Whereas these fins I'm much more accustomed to. I also have here with me some snorkel gear. And I carry lots of sets of snorkel gear. I think I have four or five sets of snorkel gear that I take with me. The snorkel gear uses an even smaller fin because you're usually just working up on the surface. So they're not nearly as uh, large a fin as your scuba diving fin, but the mask and the snorkels and all that remain about the same. But there's, so there's some differences, okay? You've got scuba gear, you've got uh, free dive gear, and you've got snorkel gear. And they all are slightly different from each other. 
So that's the fins that I take with me. I'll have, uh, I think, four sets of snorkel gear, my free dive set of fins, and my scuba fins. Snorkels, let's go to snorkels next. I have collected over the years lots and lots of different snorkels. Um, I'm not going to be brand specific here, but here's the deal. I don't like the snorkels that have the stopper at the top that's supposed to shut off when you go below water and not let water down in the tube. I was raised old school. I like a plain, solid tube. I come up to the surface, I know I got to blow in here to clear it before I can start breathing. This clears very easily. Some of these newer model masks, they have a little valve here in the bottom. A little purge valve that's supposed to help you blow the water out easier. I find I suck air so hard through these, it causes them to leak. So I prefer just a plain, simple, old school snorkel tube. Nothing too fancy. Okay, uh, I'm going to delve back into goggles here for a second. I had somebody on one of my live streams ask me about this, so I wanted to kind of show it. I have my head camera on. I think it'll do a better job of capturing this, but I'll try to show it to the big camera here as well. In my dive glasses, I don't know if you can see it that well, but I have bifocals in the bottom of the lenses. Even though I don't wear prescription glasses, I do wear magnification for reading. These bifocals in here allow me to see my gauges while I'm scuba diving. So, dog has her tennis ball out here. So this is an important modification that you're able to do. Uh, these bifocals are available at most dive shops. You can buy them online to match whatever magnification glasses uh, you're comfortable with for reading. I think I use uh, 1.5 magnification, and so that's what those are. Okay, snorkels, masks, uh, fins, We've got that taken care of. Let's move on to the next bit of gear. Before I get into the little stuff, well, let's, let's stay with clothing, shall we? Um, I carry with me scuba gloves. Now there's a lot of places where you're not allowed to wear gloves. And the reason they do that is they don't want you touching stuff on the bottom. Uh, I like to wear gloves because it stops me from getting my hands tore up on things like anchor ropes and, and mooring lines and whatever else I may be engaged with. So I like to wear a pair of gloves while I'm diving. It also protects my hands from jellyfish things, so I tend to wear those all the time. I also wear dive booties. I wear these little shoes. This was a little chewed up by the dog, but I wear these little uh, booties. My fins are fitted for my foot with these booties on. Sometimes for added protection, I will even wear socks inside of these booties. And it's kind of like seeing an old man on the beach wearing socks and sandals. But it makes my feet more comfortable and it stops me from getting blisters when I'm doing a lot of diving. So I'll wear them. I also carry hoods. I wear hoods for head protection. Again, to protect my head, neck, and face from stings from uh, um, jellyfish and such so I happen to have two here I have a three mil and a five mil and I'll get to that in just a second then I also carry an assortment of extra scraps and stuff this is a little pocket so I can store stuff in it something in this pocket just extra strapping and these will strap on or clip on to my BCD which I'll show you here in a minute for clothing in warm water I always wear a rash guard. This is just a simple one piece uh, little suit that I put on that I wear while I'm scuba diving. It protects my entire body from jellyfish things and the like. I will always wear this and believe me when you're as fat as I am nobody wants to see me out there scuba diving without coverage. So I cover myself with that. It also protects my body. This is uh, just a rash guard. It has no thermal protection to it whatsoever. I also have a three mil and a five mil full body suit that I wear. 
Now guys, even when you're my size, you can go and order from, and I'm gonna give them a little plug here because I understand they're the only manufacturer that makes them my size. This is made by Henderson, Henderson De Gear. And they actually make them up in sizes as large as mine. So I kudos to that company for uh, having large, what I like to refer to as real people sized stuff. So I have a three mil and a five mil, depending on how cold the water is, I will either put on my three mil or my five mil. Now you can go up to seven mil for really cold water. And then if it gets colder than that, you go to a dry uh, suit. I'm a warm water diver, so if I need anything beyond five mil, I'm not diving there. That's kind of simple. <clears throat> okay, so that's all the sort of clothing items. Next, let's talk about the BCD. Your BCD is single most expensive and most important part of your kit. It, uh, this is a technical BCD, which means that it's made for, uh, well, technical diving. It's made for like cave diving and that kind of stuff, not your normal everyday recreational stuff. Um, this one in particular is uh, made by Diverite. I got lots of hooks and things to attach stuff to it. It has these interesting pockets on the side. You can see that here with a red handle on it. These are my weight pockets. If I get in trouble and I want to drop my weight, I simply pull up and I pull this little pocket out of the big pocket. It's only held in there by Velcro. I can then simply drop this to the bottom and eliminate all the weight. Now the weight inside here is lead shot sewn up into canvas bags. This is the kind of weights I like to carry. I can change my weight infinitely. This is a five pound. I've got three pounds. I've got one pound weight bags. I've got a big selection of them in here. I'm sorry, those are two pounders. So I can adjust my weights depending on the salinity content of the water that I'm in as to how buoyant I want to make myself. Um, learning peak buoyancy is probably one of the biggest skills you'll have to master as a scuba diver. Okay. In this bit of kit, I also have my secondary device. This connects with an air hose to my tank, which would go on my back. This allows me to inflate a bladder, which is this black thing around the back here. All around the back, there's a U-shaped bladder that I could fill full of air. I can adjust my air and my bladder to offset the weight in my pockets to enable me to find my perfect peak buoyancy position. I can also use this as a backup regulator so I can breathe while I'm underwater. Um, not ideal for that. You have to kind of free flow a little bit to make it work, but I can. I can also control this. It's got a little cable in there. You might be able to hear that. I can open and close a valve on the back for dumping air. I can hit a button to add more air um, here and, and here as well. So, that's my BC. It's got a big stra strap on the back. Here, this is where my scuba tank mounts onto the back. Now I dive exclusively with just an air tank. I don't do any mixed gas diving. I really keep it simple. For me sailing around the world, I really don't have the room or capacity uh, to be carrying any other gases for doing a mixed gas concentration to uh, increase my bottom time. And frankly, I'm really not too worried about that. I want to enjoy myself, go down and dive, spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes or so, depending on my depth in the water, come up, and then I'll let the air compressor refill my bottle. <clears throat> Here's one of my tanks. I have a couple of them I take with me. This is 80 cu uh, cubic inches. And uh, depending on what depth I am, that's one tank is usually sufficient for me for, uh, for quite a while. Okay, 
Let's move along to some of the rest of the kit. I have my cute little water bottle I carry. I always keep something with me to drink. Not while I'm under the water, but when I get to the surface, I want fresh water to drink. Um, I will oftentimes carry lights with me, especially if I'm getting down uh, in deep or if I'm going into a wreck or if I'm going into a cave. And of course, if we're videotaping, uh, like for example, this particular uh, light can mount onto a uh, device for the camera, so my dive camera. I'm not going to get into my camera gear here today. I'm just going to talk about the other gear I carry with me normally. So I have a selection of lights. I have uh, primary lights. I've got secondary lights. I carry with me a collection of lights and a huge collection of batteries to match all of them because there's always a, a big variety. All right, and the second bag I carry here with me, I have a whole bunch of other stuff. I carry with me a dive knife at all times. I will always have a dive knife with me. I use it more for cleaning up the bottom than anything else. Cutting up nets, fishing line, gathering all that up to take back to the surface with me. Just cleaning the bottom. I particularly like this one by XS Scuba. It's a nice sharp knife. It's got a wire cutter on here. But I can undo this little clip here at the bottom. And I have a scissor. Which makes these particularly handy especially when I'm trying to clean up stuff. They're also good for cleaning fish. It latches in, it's got two straps to connect to my legs, very handy. I carry a couple of those. I have a signal tube. This connects to my BC, allows me to send, uh, fill this full of air. When I get to the surface it's, uh, surface, it's this big yellow wand waving around and makes it easier for a pickup boat to see me. Connected to this, I also carry a safety whistle. <laughs> so I can signal for help. I carry a notepad. This is a design for kind of like your Etch-a-Sketch books. Remember when you were a kid you had Etch-a-Sketch? This has got an Etch-a-Sketch. It's got a little eraser on it so I can mark on it. All, um, I find these to be handy but the Etch-a-Sketch sometimes wears out after a while. Uh, I carry with me a number of retractors because I will oftentimes have a lot of excess gear with me. I'll have uh, um, collection bags, I'll have uh, tools with me, I'll have um, reels of line with me so I can you know, map out a, a coordinate or lay a line through a cave complex that I'm swimming through so I can find my way back out. Okay, I have a selection of defog different types of defog stuff that I use on my mask so I always have a clean mask you know the floater when I go night diving I have these little uh, blinking lights that we put on the tanks so people know where I'm at let's see I carry with me some tools I don't carry these while I'm under the water I only carry these on the surface um, I carry with me a number of fish identification tools such as little flip cards or books that will have pictures of various fish so I can identify all the different fish that I see. Now why do I do this? Quite often when I'm diving I'm involved in some uh, citizen science projects. We'll be collecting some data from the surface or from the bottom, counting fish, counting corals, that sort of stuff. So I need to be able to make sure I identify the fish correctly so I can, uh, identif uh, I can write it down correctly. Uh, I'll have little notepads like this that connect to my arm, got a little pencil on it, I can write on there and take notes. Notepad. I carry with me a whole bunch of identification books. I don't carry these down under the water with me, these stay on the boat. But these are just some of my fish identification books I take with me. Uh, everything from uh, pelagics to nudibranches to corals, uh, rigging, different sport fish identification. This is a cool book. It actually tells you what fish taste good for those of us that like to eat off the bottom. Okay, what else do I got? I carry with me dive flags. I have an assortment of them. Uh, this is a little inflatable pocket buoy that I inflate. It's got a little flag on it. And then I also have a larger flag that goes up on a bigger float that sticks up about four feet out of the water 
uh, or I can rent, run this up on a halyard on the sailboat and be, uh, have a dive flag up. Whenever you're in the water, got to have a dive flag shown. Um, but, but, just because you're towing a dive buoy or just because you've got a dive flag up, <clears throat> you can't expect every uh, captain out there to uh, see that and want to uh, honor it. Because a lot of people out there on boats don't have a clue what that is. They don't know what that means. They don't know they're supposed to stay 100 yards away from it. Um, so sometimes they'll actually come up closer to see what it is. So when you're surfacing, uh, whether you're scuba diving or whether you're snorkeling on the surface, you got to listen and pay attention and listen for those motors to make sure that you come up someplace where it's safe, where you're not going to get run over. Okay. Next item. <clears throat> these are my uh, these are my gauges. Bring these in a little closer so you can see them. Uh, this is my primary and these are my two secondaries. Uh, one is my main secondary that I work to my mouth. This is a backup that connects to my BCD but also enables me to breathe off of it directly without having to sip air directly from the valve which is also can be done which allows you a third option. And then lastly I have my gauges where I've got my air pressure, my computer, and my compass showing where I'm at or what direction I have to go in. <clears throat> now for right now my computer's down because I ran out of battery. I have just ordered new batteries and so those will be coming in pretty soon. I only ordered a few of them. You can buy batteries all around the world even though I'm going for an 8 to 10 year sale there's no point in me taking batteries that'll last me more than a year or two because they don't they don't hold their charge you want to buy fresh ones every so often so I just bought a couple batteries so I have some spares um, always got to keep this stuff in good clean condition have it serviced on a regular basis uh, just make sure it's working good my gear is not particularly expensive this is Sherwood um, not the best in the world, not the worst in the world, just good serviceable heavy duty regulators that has lasted me for years now and I've had zero problems with it. So that speaks highly of it. Okay, and then the last thing, I have everything else yet, the last thing I always take care of with me is my dive book. I carry with me a dive book, that way I can record uh, all my dives. I can make notes on here where I was diving, who I was diving with, uh, what depth we were diving at. Let me get the one filled out here. Whoop. Oh, there we go. Um, you know, where I was, who I was diving with. Um, let's see, this one I was diving Molasses Reef in, the, in Florida. And uh, here I was diving in, uh, where? Bear Reservoir, that's in Utah and uh, sandy ledges and the Indians and the BVI. Uh, anyhow, so I keep a book, keep track of my dives. I also keep in here my dive tables so that I can track my bottom time. Uh, keep that with me at all times so I can double check my bottom time, make sure I'm not over uh, nitrogen loading myself so I can make sure I stay clear. So I always keep that up and I record on that after the end of every dive. Um, on the boat, when I surface, what I'll do is I'll take my tank, I'll take my scuba tank off of my BCD and hook the air compressor to it. And while it's charging, I'll be offloading nitrogen, filling out my dive logs, uh, rinsing all the rest of my equipment, uh, all my cameras and gear. I'll be changing batteries and stuff, getting that ready. But I just wanted to give you a quick outline of what I take with me on a sail trip around the world. <coughs> and uh, give you some idea some of the stuff you need um, personally I think I need everything here there's nothing here you know maybe I have too many lights probably <coughs> maybe my redundancy in carrying extra knives and stuff uh, I think I've got three masks which might be a little excess but I like having the extra one with me 
But other than that, I'm pretty bare bones and basic. I don't have a whole lot of extra gear with me. Don't need a whole lot of extra gear. All of this stuff will do me fine, and with this, I'll be able to dive anywhere in the tropics, anywhere in the world. So, here's a little close up of my uh, BC. It is a dive right trans pack. It's got the quickly removable pockets. I like it a lot, it works very well for me. My bag full of flashlights, snorkels and masks. Sorry, everything's a mess here. I just got done doing the video. I like to carry a few of these. Uh, although on the boat, I'm gonna be single handing a lot. Look at that, that's all dive slime on there, huh? Uh, so I probably won't use those so much unless I'm trying to signal another boat. I got lots of different masks. Uh, again, with the um, um, lenses built into them so that I can see what I'm doing. I've got snorkel fins, scuba diving fins, free diving fins. I have Sherwood uh, regulators and secondaries, primaries, full set of Sherwoods. Henderson dive skins because they make them my size, 5XL, 6XL. Uh, my dive bags. Uh, this is a, a Kona, and uh, I carry a scuba, or a Sherwood, this is my Sherwood dive bag. It has all my stuff. This is a roll-on case that can go into uh, the airport, and then I carry all my scuba gear, extra hoses, and that kind of stuff in a Pelican 1610. Okay, so let's get to the actual packing and see how I put all this stuff together for me. Okay, so this is my... Uh, my accoutrement box. Let's go ahead and get all the toys and stuff put away first. I also carry some fishing reels in here. Okay, first of all, in this bag, we have all of our knives, our signal flares, our retractors, our fish identification books. That goes in there. Then we add in all of our uh, dive lights that we have. Not all of them, but just the handheld ones, not the ones that go on the camera. Okay, that fits in there. We're gonna put our pocket buoy in here. This is a little inflatable device for a dive flag. And we have our extra dive flag, which will go in here. Stays nice and protected. Okay, well that's it for the gear that goes in here for this kind of gear. I have some other gear I'm gonna pack in here, but that takes care of the Pelican case. Let us now move on to the dive bag. Let's see what we put in there. Okay. So here we go with the dive bag. Open that up. Got a little sand in there, but that's all right. First thing I do is I store my mesh bag down on the bottom. Now I like to use a mesh bag when I'm at the dock or someplace like that where I can uh, put my stuff in there and store it and keep it, uh, let it, let it continue drying. Okay, next, take care of my skins. I put them in this section. There goes that one, five mil, there's the three mil. There's my rash guard, the hoods, booties, gloves. Oh, not that. All of my clothing items go inside this compartment here. I will put my extra pockets and stuff in there. Next, the BCD goes in. And that sits there on top of that. Okay, now with my BCD, I also store My extra snorkels, which I really got to sort through and do something with. And my masks, my tank knocker, all that goes in there. I'll close that up. Sorry about the shakiness of this, but I have you mounted up on up high where you can get a bird's eye view. 
Okay, in this compartment, I store my dive book. So I always have that with me. In this compartment goes my regulator. Now for the protection of my regulator, I keep it inside of another bag. So that all fits in that bag. It gives it some extra cushion around it. And then that fits into that pocket. Got my ID and stuff in there so if it gets lost they can find me. And then lastly, I put my fins in here. And I put them in with the heel part down. That way the tip of my fins don't get messed up from hanging out in the bag forever. And that's pretty much it. That's all that goes into this rolling case. Kind of dirty, I know. Been kicking around in storage and getting dirty and dusty up here in my cabin in Alaska. But when I get out to the boat, I'll be able to get that all cleaned up. So that's the uh, that's the dive bag. Last thing I need to pack up is my uh, free diving gear. Now, one thing I didn't address in the video earlier is that in my free diving gear I also have another set of booties um, these are a little bit higher booty not just a foot piece and uh, these are specifically designed to work with these fins so let's go ahead and get them in there um, the bag for my free dive gear is designed so that the blades go down first I'm not too keen on that because they tend to get damaged, but then the snorkel and the free dive masks go in there with it. And uh, and that's it. There's my gear all packed and ready to go. I've got most of my accessories in the Pelican case. I've got snorkel gear and a free dive bag on top. All my scuba gear is packed inside that. I have my weight in a bucket with my water bottle my reference books, and then I have a couple scuba tanks. And that's really all there is to it. Well, that's really all there is to it. All my scuba gear fits into that small of an area. And uh, when I get on the boat, I'll take it even and pack it even smaller because I won't be needing these cases on board. I'll have their spot and they'll stay in their perfect spot. So anyhow, guys, that's it. Let's go ahead and wrap this up uh, here. If you uh, like this kind of thing, please do like and subscribe. We're going to have a lot of scuba diving footage coming in the future once we get on the boat next month. Uh, next month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once we're on the boat next month down in Puerto Rico. That's so cool. Guys, this has been decades in coming. That's just so cool to be able to say. There's a little reality check for me. Anyhow, please do like and subscribe. Uh, check out our Patreon page if you would. There's a link down below in the description. Guys, you have yourselves a great day. We'll catch you later. Thanks. Bye.